I, I loved Candace's talk yesterday. Yes, I, I love all of them, uh, in, increasingly more so. Um, but just the, the obviousness of what's being talked about here in our own experience, it just becomes so undeniable that even if it's 2 in the morning, I think I sent my value letter at 1.30 or something. I was excited just by remembering and reading the texts. Uh, because it's so obvious that we as humans are at this critical juncture in our own, as in our own life. Right? That's why we're all here, because we feel we are at a juncture in our life where we want something different. And then all of humankind is at this juncture as well, where we know that the things we have been doing for millennia, they, they brought us this far, and, and we're ready for something new. And then Finally, there is, there is something new that is um, not just like a dingling carrot, you know, that you're trying to catch and you never can, but where actually somebody not only can describe the nature of reality, but can give us a roadmap and a travel set that all we need to do is apply it. You know, where before, when I, when I heard great descriptions about uh, indivisibility or the unified field or watched movies that, that spoke about this. I felt excited, but then I was left by myself, basically. Just, uh, and then the feeling of excitement left. And, and I was basically at the same place as I was before, every time losing a little bit of hope and becoming quite cynical, although never quite giving up as well which I'm very grateful for. And I, and I didn't give up because I knew there must be something, that there must be something there that, that is an, an easy to implement solution for human beings, and, and there is. So we're very happy, very lucky to have, to have stumbled across it. And like Candy said yesterday, this is really a time of pioneers. And... Uh, I, I used to describe myself definitely not as a pioneer. I was uh, more like afraid of uh, big changes and I wanted everything very organized and in its little cupboard so that it doesn't look too intimidating. And so that's not the description of somebody like getting into a ship and discovering a new continent or something like that. Uh, I, I'd rather stay at home where it's safe and warm and where I have all, all the things I need and everything's insured. And, uh, but at, at some point, it's just clear that, you know, you can't deny your own impulse for benefit. And, and that's really what, what happened to me is uh, that with each sharp moment, there is more courage. With each sharp moment of open intelligence, there is more courage to take another step. It's not that we have to leap into a strange abyss where we don't know what happens. It's just in each sharp moment, with, with whatever it is that feels daunting, with each sharp moment where we feel we're at our limit, we can just relax and open. I love this opening intelligence. It's not uh, a static determination or destination where we need to jump into, not knowing what will happen. It's just forever opening. It's forever opening as, as our own mind. That's really what our mind is. Our mind is naturally an adventurous explorer. There is always more data we discover. Whether we want it or not, that's what happened all the time. And that's why we couldn't manage it or control it. You can't control an open system to be locked down and be definitive, and then you can put it on your night table overnight and plug it in again in the morning, and it will do exactly what you want. That's just not the way the mind actually works. That's why the tools that we have applied don't work. Yeah, we have the main state. You know, in an intimate relationship, I, I guess almost everybody who enters into an intimate relationship, if it's by choice. In many countries, you have no choice on, on who you're marrying. Uh, but, but here, most people do feel we have a choice, when in fact, the way we make those decisions aren't really by choice. 
we have a certain data set, and then we think that means that we're in love and we get married and we just go the whole thing. So we think we made a choice when actually we were operated by a certain data stream. And then if, if that's the way we make decisions, then when the data stream changes, we think we need to change the decision. We either need to change the person, which I've tried, uh, or, or this person, which I've tried, uh, and, and you know, none of this really leads anywhere. So for many people uh, today, it's, it's easy to just, uh, even if you are married, uh, then to just go to the next person. Uh, where that same feeling comes up again. We're in love, and we heard a great example yesterday in, in the talk, so I won't go into the whole sequence, but it's just repeating the same thing again and again. Whereas here, we really see that whatever the data are that, that are coming up, they don't need to inform our decision-making anymore whether it's fear of a certain thing, whether it's attraction to a certain thing, or with thing, I mean, uh, it could be a person, or it, it, it could be anything, uh, anybody. We, we don't have to make decisions anymore like a robot where, where one thing comes up and we need to respond in the same old way, in a learned way. We can actually rest deeply in the power of great benefit where we have insight and access to knowledge that we don't have if we only jump from one datum to another. It's, it's very easy to, to even just think about it in this way that you can either make decisions based on all the, all the knowledge that you've already learned in your life, and then all you can basically do is rather than innovate and do something new, all you can do is reconfigure the tiny little world that we've lived in or we can, our, uh, we can allow our intelligence to open up to its naturally open and really networked, like we heard today in the talk, a networked reality where all the knowledge of the universe is th that already is indivisible from your own intelligence is then usable as our own intelligence. Usable meaning not as, well, at least at this time, uh, it's not as some kind of external database where you then suddenly know, like, I want to know about how a quantum computer works, and then you know that exactly. You might, actually. And, uh, and we are getting towards uh, a time and, and age where humans, if you just look at how you know, complicated it would have been to access knowledge uh, 50 years ago, and how now you can go to Wiki or to another site, and all the knowledge is already there, and it becomes easier and easier for us to access it. And uh, when you then allow yourself to rest deeply while you sift through all the information that's out there, it's just everything clicks in. I, I remember how difficult it sometimes was for me to learn new things because I, the, the feeling that I had was there is something out there, I need to trap it in there. Uh, somehow stuff it in there and then needing to be able to reproduce it for somebody else testing me than at the university or places like this. And how incredibly easy it is to just relax deeply and see in myself that if I, if I just relax, then all the knowledge that I ever need is already present. And th the way this works for me is, is really on a day-to-day -day basis where I can make decisions where I can uh, learn about new fields of knowledge I'm interested in, like computing or like uh, finan making financial decisions, uh, you know, without studying them, but just being, being open to consider everything deeply, listening deeply, and then just by that, by exposing ourselves to everything as it is, rather than feeling that we need to micromanage everything all the time. Uh, we see that actually we, we do have the capacity to make one clear decision after another, moment by moment by moment by moment. And so whether it's computing or teaching or being in an intimate relationship, after the introduction, all that's needed is the, the commitment to really apply this algorithm 
with every single question you have in your life. Like for me, in the, after the introduction and being in a situation with, with my partner uh, that used to trigger all kinds of learned responses, and I could then choose between, okay, do I want to argue or do I want to make this or do I want to make this, by just relaxing completely and being, being open-heartedly connected, then I could see that there was a much wider range of choices. And it's always clear where to go. It's always clear where to go. Even if it's not clear where to go, then that's clear. <laughs> then you know. It's, it's such a relief. You always know. Just by relaxing your mind completely, you always know. And we can trust in that really 100%, because every time we test it, it works. And if we feel stuck somewhere, we always have the other mainstays. We always have them. You know, like for me, I, I have days, I think, where I don't see anybody, uh, where all, all I do is just go about my day, and I'm on my computer and uh, work on things. And, but in my, in my heart, that's really where the mainstays are. So you, you can live anywhere. Uh, and of course, you can also watch talks and do all those things online. And at the same time, I did make a choice to spend all my time with the mainstays. And that to me really means that I have a, a lifestyle that from morning to night, that's really all I want to do. And that doesn't exclude anybody else. Of course, I, I honor my family relationships and do all these things. But you have so much more choice about how you want to live your life. So much more choice than we thought. If the priority is opening intelligence rather than living a life based on data, it opens up so much choice. There are doubts coming up about, you know, will I be able to have these, this relationship or what will happen to my, to my spouse? Short moments and see that nothing has to happen. You can rest deeply in your power of great benefit, and then the decision will come about naturally. You have a question about, will I be able to make enough money? Exactly the same. Prioritize open intelligence when this doubt comes up. And it is the algorithm. It, it, has never, it really has never failed me. In all those, uh, I think, seven years now, it has never failed me. There, was, there wasn't a single decision that I've made based on the mainstays that I would make different today. No, not a single one. That's what an algorithm does. It, it's not that if you're lucky and if you did all the right things yesterday, then it works. It works all the time. And it's just up to us to apply it. And then assurance grows. So there is the introduction, then there is the commitment. And with each time, it's not that we make the commitment once. It's in every, in every moment we, we enact the commitment. And so the commitment grows. And with a growing commitment, of course, the result grows. The assurance grows. So that's good. It really, it's, it's such good news. And then all the people who may not be ready at this time at all, or who have a disposition where, you know, I, I didn't know what a short moment, if you don't know what short moments are, don't worry. I, I had no idea what a short moment is. But what did help me was to see other people who knew what short moments are, and then see their results and just spend time with them. And so even if I wasn't that like early, early pioneer who could do it all by themselves, I could just look at other people who had a naturally restful mind or, you know, who were around me and, and said, all is well, don't worry. And so in, in this way, we really sweep each other up. We support each other. And then all the people who have no idea what it is at all or don't have a natural disposition to test it out, they'll just adopt to it naturally, just like at some point some critters saw the first human getting up and looked at them and thought, wow. And then they tried themselves as well. 
and then the next one tried, and the next one tried, and now look at us. We can walk and run around and <laughs> fly into space and do all those other incredible things, and, and we've just learned all of that together. So when Kendi speaks about the evolutionary and the educational imperative, that's really what it means. For those of us who are open in our disposition, then, then we, we learn this for everybody. And with every short moment we take, we really change the way society works. And, and that is really what I, if, if there is anything I, I, I could offer as something that has leverage my own practice and assurance, then it's to dedicate your practice, if you want to call it a practice, dedicate your lifestyle, and actually your life to the benefit of all. And allow this force that is a force that is so much greater than anything we can even imagine to fuel, to really fuel your commitment that with each short moment you take with an afflictive state where you can't be fooled by it anymore, y you do this for, for all human beings and for all kinds of other agents that may be running around, flying around. So we clarify all data. And in this way, we, we create a world within this world that is emerging from within this world that is so, it's so incredibly beneficial to all. And we build this, each building block, each short moment, one moment at a time, with each choice to be, to, to claim this birthright. We, we do it for everybody. So it's, it's incredible. It's incredible to see you all. It's incredible to know that there are so many people today who rely on this instead of data. So thank you all so much.